You know, I can almost guarantee you that uh, after this video, and it may be uh, possibly a two-parter here, um, many of my subscribers will unsubscribe immediately. I mean, not that uh, YouTube reflects any kind of uh, uh, subscriber base to anyone's video to start with, because it's all fake, you know. <laughs> It's like having a channel with 200 subscribers after three years or something. It doesn't mean shit, basically. But this is uh, apt to do um, some more damage. And if you want to unsubscribe after this video, please feel free to do so. Because... My videos are not about my subscription base or anything else here on some YouTube channel in videos or any place else. What I will read to you excerpts today uh, from a an essay by Chris Hedges. Many of you may not even know who this guy is, but, uh, you know, look him up, Google him. That's your own homework, so to speak. And I'm afraid that many people will not listen to Chris Hedges, the canary in the coal mine, so to say. So here is the essay. I can't read it in its entirety because of copyright uh, things and, and such. I will post a link to his original essay, of course. We owe Ralph Nader and Cynthia McKinney an apology. They were right about Barack Obama. They were right about the corporate state. They had the courage of their convictions and they stood fast despite the wholesale defection and ridicule by liberals and progressives. <clears throat> Obama lies cravenly, if not as crudely as George Bush. He promised that the transfer of the 12 trillion taxpayer money to Wall Street would open up credit and lending to the average consumer. The Federal Deposit Insurance Agency, corporation basically, FDIC, however admitted last week that the banks have reduced lending at the sharpest pace since 1942. As a senator, Obama promised he would filibuster amendments to the FISA Reform Act that retroactively made it legal to spy on American citizens. Monitoring millions of our transactions and emails, telephone conversations, and so on. Instead, when he got into office as president, he supported that legislation. He told us that he would withdraw American troops 
from Iraq. Close the detention facilities in Guantanamo. End torture. Restore civil liberties and create new jobs. None of this has happened. He is shoving down a health care bill down our throats that would give hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayer dollars to private health insurance agencies and industries in the form of subsidies and force millions of uninsured Americans to take out plans via those subsidies which are no good whatsoever. Trash policies, in other words, which will not help you from going bankrupt after you enter into that system again and which will leave you bankrupt once you face those bills. He empowers Israel's brutal apartheid state. He has expanded the war in Afghanistan and Pakistan where hundreds of civilians, including entire families, have been slaughtered by sophisticated weapons such as the Hellfire missile which in actuality draws the air out of your lungs once it gets close. The illegal wars and occupation, the largest transfer of wealth upward in American history and the assault on civil liberties all begun of course under George W. Bush where he's only a flicker of tepid protests from liberals when propagated by the Democrats. Liberals, unlike the right wing, are emotionally disabled. They appear not to feel. The Tea Party protesters, the myopic supporters of Sarah Palin, the veterans signing up for Oath Keepers and so on, and the Armed Patriot Movement, have basically swept into their ranks legions of disenfranchised workers, angry libertarians, John Birchers, and many who, until now, were never politically active. They, uh, they articulate a legitimate rage. Yet liberals continue to speak in the bloodless language of issues and policies and leave emotion and anger to the proto-fascists. Uh -huh. I think after this sentence you may want to unsubscribe if you don't want to continue to listen. Take a look at the 3,000 word suicide note left by Joe Stack 
who flew his Piper Cherokee in, last month into some federal building, the IRS office, murdering an IRS worker, basically, and injuring dozens. He is not alone in that rage. Part 2.